guys and welcome back to another chapter of From Ashes to a New Beginning. Written by me, Stacy Holt. Artwork was by Pastel Kitty Gore Art. As for my amazing voice actors, Diz will be voicing Adrian and Cat Noir. Zachary CT will be voicing Tom. And I will be the narrator as well as Marinette. And Sabine will be voiced by me as well. And Sue will be voicing Tiki. Gabriel will be voiced by Obrazikio. And Natalie will be voiced by Catherine. Back to chapter 45. Adrian sat up and saw that she was serious. She brought her knees to her chest in a fetal position, as if something was bothering her. What's the matter, Bugaboo? Adrian said, looking at her with a worried expression. She turned her head and looked at him. I was given a message. Before losing my memories, Marinette said. A message? From who? Why? Adrian said, now worried more than ever. Her name was Sylvia. She was a previous Ladybug Miraculous holder, Marinette explained. The name Sylvia rang around the room, catching the attention of Tiki and Plague. They flew over to Marinette as fast as they could with shocked expressions. You talked to Sylvia? Tiki said, tears filling her eyes. Yeah, I did. Marinette smiled at Tiki. What did she say? Tiki said, trying to contain her excitement. She said to tell you hello, and that she misses you. Marinette smiled. Marinette could see those words really touch Tiki's heart as she tried not to cry. Tiki turned away from them all, and Plag hugged her. Did she say anything else? Adrian asked. She did. Something hidden deep. Find it, and you'll be faced with despair. Ignorance is bliss. She gave me a warning about something, Marinette said, turning her attention back to Adrian. Something hidden deep? What does that mean? Adrian said, confused. I'm honestly not sure, Marinette questioned. We should ask Alex. If it brings despair, she would probably know. She wouldn't let the world suffer for our mistakes, Marinette said. Yeah, you're right. First, let's go eat some breakfast. Your parents must be awake by now. Adrian smiled. Yeah, Marinette smiled. Adrian could have sworn he saw a hint of sadness within her smile, but decided not to say anything. He knew this was going to be hard for her. He followed close behind her, heading downstairs. They were met with the heart-aching truth once they reached the bottom of the stairs. Marinette stopped at the bottom of the stairs, looking at her parents' bag sitting by the door. Adrian took hold of Marinette's hand for comfort. Come on, I'm here for you. It'll be all right, Bugaboo. He smiled, seeing her saddened face fighting back tears. Marinette felt Adrian pull her forward, and she stumbled towards him, feeling like her feet were about ten pounds each. Adrian pulled her into the dining room, where her mother and father were having breakfast, and found Adrian pushing her into a chair. She found herself in such a daze. Everything seemed so surreal. Was this really real? Were they really leaving? Was she going to be okay without them? She was going to be alone without them. Her mind was spinning. She felt a pit in her stomach as she looked down at her lap, almost feeling like she was going to throw up. Honey, are you alright? Sabine asked, seeing that Marinette was clearly upset. I... I'm fine, Mom. Marinette smiled. Tom, Sabine, and Adrian exchanged looks and knew she was lying. Adrian sighed and leaned into her ear. What's going on? You're acting strange all of a sudden, he said. I just feel a little sick, she said, standing up. Marinette quickly left the table and left the dining room and hurried back upstairs. What's the matter? Is she all right? Tom asked. I'm honestly not sure, Adrian said, also taken aback by Marinette's odd behavior. I'll go talk to her. You two can stay here. I'll bring her back. Sabine smiled, standing up and walking out of the dining room to follow Marinette. Sabine walked into the living room, where they watched the movie and played video games the night before, and found her sitting fetal position. Sabine sighed and sat down beside her. Marinette? 
Is something bothering you? Are you not alright with us leaving? Sabine asked. Mom, I want you and Dad to be happy. I know you want to go to the US, but I'm gonna miss you so much. It didn't seem real till this morning. It didn't hit me until I saw your bags at the door. All of these emotions and sadness, Marinette said, hugging her mother. Marinette, you are a strong young lady. We've seen that since you started high school. This isn't goodbye, you know. We're simply making another bakery for you to stay in just a little farther away. You can come visit us anytime you like. We will also come visit as much as we can as well. Sabine smiled, caressing Marinette. Mom, I love you so much. Marinette said crying, hugging her tighter. Sabine and Marinette talked and hugged one another one last time before seeing that Adrian and Tom were standing in the living room doorway. You ready, dear? You're leaving already? Marinette frowned. Our flight isn't for another two hours. But we still have to drive there and get through the airport, sweetie. Sabine smiled, standing up. Marinette frowned and stood up with her and walked over to her father. She took a deep breath and wrapped her arms around her father, feeling him wrap his arms around her as well. Adrian smiled, seeing how much Marinette's parents cared so much for her. We love you so much, honey. Stay safe. And we will see you back here in a couple of months when you graduate. Don't be afraid to FaceTime us. Sabine smiled, picking up her luggage. Please, call me when you get to your new house, Marinette said, trying not to cry. We will, honey, Tom said, picking his luggage up as well. Tell Miss Jurgress thank you so much for allowing us to stay here. Also, tell him that we appreciate him allowing us to make payments to him for the bakery. Sabine smiled. Paying for the new bakery and starting new would be extremely difficult without his help. Tom smiled. Yeah, uh, sure. I'll tell him when I see him. Adrian smiled. Sabine and Tom left and got into a cab that was parked outside of the gate and waved them goodbye. Marinette waved them goodbye until she could no longer see the cab in sight. As soon as the car was no longer in sight, Marinette rushed to the top of the house and sat on the roof, crying into her knees. Adrian wanted to comfort her, but knew there was nothing he could do. There was also something that was eating on his mind. Something that Tom had said. Gabriel paid for their house and was letting them make payments? Adrian walked to his father's office and knocked on the door. Natalie answered it and looked at him with a confused expression. What's the matter, Adrian? What do you need? She asked. I wanted to ask my father something. He said. You know your father is quite busy. Natalie, I'm not a child anymore. I work for my father. I need to discuss business matters with him. Adrian said as serious as he could, hoping that would give her enough reason to let him through. Natalie sighed and opened the door, letting him enter. Adrian walked in, his palms already a little sweaty, and saw his father standing over a tablet, assuming he was still working on designs. What's the matter, son? Why are you bothering me? He asked. Father, I- He stopped, noticing that Natalie didn't leave. Uh Natalie, can my father and I talk alone? Adrian asked. Natalie's eyes widened. She looked at Gabriel. Gabriel's eyes also widened slightly, but nodded to Natalie. Natalie narrowed her eyes and walked outside of the room. Is everything all right? What did you want to discuss that Natalie could not be present? Gabriel asked, now interested. The Dupin Chinks. Why did you buy the house for them in the U.S.? Adrian asked. Why is that any of your concern? Gabriel asked. Adrian was taken aback. His mind went blank. He was still rather afraid of his father. He swallowed and stood his ground. He was an adult. He needed to show his father he was a man. Father, I am dating Marinette. I don't know what your intentions are for my girlfriend's family, but I don't want you to hurt them in any way. Adrian glared. You assume I did it to hurt them? <laughs> Gabriel laughed. 
I know you, Father. You're a businessman. You wouldn't buy a house for someone out of the kindness of your heart. Adrian scoffed. Gabriel chuckled softly and walked toward Adrian, placing a hand on his shoulder. You really are my son, aren't you? You look like me and your mother every day. Gabriel smiled. Father, I'm serious. What are you planning with Marinette's bakery in the U.S.? Adrian asked again. If you really must know, it was to establish a business in the U.S. Once they start a nice business, I can expand my designing business there as well. Gabriel smiled. So it was business? Adrian said. You aren't going to take it away from them, are you? As long as they make their payments and are good tenants, they should have nothing to fear, son. Gabriel said, returning back to his tablet. Now, you need to leave so I can return to designing. Don't you have work or school or something? Gabriel said. Adrian rolled his eyes and left the office, returning back to his bedroom. Natalie returned back into the office and looked at Gabriel. Was it really just business, sir? She asked. So you heard our conversation. <laughs> Gabriel chuckled. Of course, sir. I was listening in. She smiled. It was business at first. Now that I know Marinette is, well, was Ladybug, things have changed. Cat Noir still cares for Marinette. And we can use her to get to him. Gabriel smiled. I see. Natalie smiled. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. I am writing a new fanfic while trying to work and edit, so sorry for the slow pace. Though I am so ready for Halloween this year, as this new fanfic is going to be super scary and I can't wait for you guys to hear it. Also, if you like my videos, please consider turning your YouTube ad block off. Also, subscribe, comment, and like. It really helps me out. Turning the YouTube ad block off is like showing me your support and helps me continue making content for you guys. As always, have a miraculous day and I'll talk to everyone soon. Bye!